Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, The Victory. This is the story of our soldiers of occupation in Europe and how some of them won an unusual battle as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Have you ever been a sidewalk superintendent? Stood on the sidelines and watched a big building going up? You know, the whole thing is so fascinating that you lose all track of time. You're completely absorbed seeing the architect's blueprints come to life before your eyes. Well, it's the same way when you enlist in the United States Army. You can't join unless you're good material to begin with. And then they mold you into a man. A man who doesn't have to look up to anybody because he's the best soldier in the world. They give you basic training so that you can defend yourself even when the odds seem all against you. They send you to good schools and train you to be a specialist in a technical field. They give you good-looking uniforms, the best medical care, everything you need to be an outstanding member of an outstanding service, the United States Army. Your local recruiting sergeant will be glad to give you full information. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Victory. Nice of you to give me a lift to my company, Mr. Sanders. Uh, if it means getting a good story, Sergeant Rogers, I'll carry you clear to Berlin. <laughs> my editor's getting mighty impatient to hear something from me. I, I think it's a pretty good story. At least it's a long one. So I better get started telling you about what happened. Okay, shoot. I'm all ears. And pencil. Well, it's hard to know where to begin. I suppose my arrival in Germany would be the best place to pick it up. You see, we occupy the town of... Gelnhausen, which is 50 kilometers from the border dividing the east to west zones. Yeah. And one of our main duties is maintaining and controlling border crossing points. I see. However, we have certain other duties which aren't mentioned in orders, and the most important of these is conducting ourselves in such a manner as to earn the respect and goodwill of the people whose country we're occupying. Sounded kind of strange to hear all that good old baseball chatter right in the middle of a town that hadn't changed for centuries. And by the time the game had progressed to the sixth inning, the field was filled along the sidelines by kids of assorted sizes and ages. In their short pants and long stockings, they stood there, solemn and quiet. As I stepped up to the plate, I, I couldn't help thinking how different they were from American kids, who by now would have been shouting and yelling. Okay, Sarge, we're behind. How about knocking it over the fence? What fence? Okay, so we don't have a fence. Knock it over the town wall, then. Are you kidding? It's not only a thousand years old, it's a thousand yards away. I'll settle for a base hit. All right, put it over. All right. Watch this one. Oh, well, Pop Fowler, is that the best you can do, Sarge? It was only a Pop Fowl. But something happened that made it turn out to be a lot more than that. A lot more. The ball had fallen into the crowd of kids, and one of them had held up his hands in self-defense, I guess, and caught it. And there was a look of such pride in his eyes that when one of the men went over to get the ball... Okay, kid, give me the ball. Nicht verstehen. Uh, geben me, uh, das ball. Ah, let him keep it, Olsen. Government property, Sarge. Yeah, but this ball's shot and ready for salvage anyway. Keep it, kid. Danke schön, mein Herr. Danke schön. A 
Now, by the time I finished striking out at the plate, the kids were tossing the ball back and forth among themselves, trying to imitate the way a pitcher throws a softball underhanded. While I was sitting on the bench watching them, I, I suddenly got an idea. I didn't know whether it would work or not, but it was worth a try. So the next morning... In der Ruhe. Guten Abend, Sergeant. Hello, Herr Bürgermeister. Well, I see you got the kids out for me. Yeah, there's not a single one who did not come. Fine, thanks a lot. As many of them speak a little English, but I have here one boy who speaks it almost as perfectly as I speak. Huh? Yes, Hans. Ja, Herr Bürgermeister. Now, here is a Sergeant Artis for whom you will translate English. Glad to meet you, Hans. I will help you in any way possible, Herr Sergeant. That's fine. Well, what do you say we start in right now? Um, okay. Well, hey, you speak English pretty good. All right, everybody. Come on, gather round. I want to explain the nomenclature of the softball M1. All right, Hans. Now, take a healthy cut at the ball. But, Herr Sergeant, I do not have a knife. <laughs> Never mind. Just swing at the ball with your bat. Sergeant Rogers, Charger Quarters says he has a telegram for you. Telegram? Okay, Corporal Olson. I'll be right down. Will you take over here for me a while? Just show them how to swing at a ball. Why, uh, well, sure, Sergeant. Oh, it's like this, men. I mean, fellas. I mean, uh, kids... It was a cablegram from my wife, Helen. She had received the travel orders and was due to arrive within two weeks. Well, what with my normal duties and painting and fixing up the apartment, I didn't have too much time to devote to the softball league I had started for the German kids. But what had begun as a one-man operation mushroomed suddenly. My fellow soldiers heard about what was going on, and one by one they started drifting around to the field and began showing the kids how to play. But the two weeks were over before I realized it, and the big day arrived when I walked up the front steps to our apartment with Helen. Well, honey, this is it. Oh, Jim, it's very nice. Well, it's not exactly like the States, but I guess it'll do. <laughs> of course, dear. How many rooms are there? Living room, two bedrooms, and kitchen. Oh, where's the kitchen, Jim? I want to see that first. Uh, right through here. Come on. I can't believe it. It's got everything, a gas range, an electric refrigerator. And not only that, you'll have a German housekeeper who'll help you with the cooking, too. Good. Maybe she can teach me how to make apple strudel. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's take a look at the rest of the place. Hey, there's a balcony leading off the living a room. A balcony? How nice. I'm going to like it here. Yes, on that first day, Helen thought she'd like it. But she didn't know that she'd have reason to change her mind later. After a couple of weeks, during which Helen and I acquainted ourselves with one another again, I decided to drop around to the athletic field to see how my boys were doing, and I found I was in for a surprise. Hi, Sergeant Rogers. We've missed you. I'm uh, kind of busy, Corporal Olson. Hello, Sergeant. Hi, Hans. How have you been doing? Okay, I guess. We have four teams made up. The Gelhausen Giants, the Dunkershine Yankees, <laughs> and the Wiedersehen Athletics. And the Gesundheit Dodgers. <laughs> and who's ahead? The umpire. That is the way it seems like anyway. <laughs> and, and who's the umpire? Corporal Olsen. Well, there's no wonder. All right, get out there. Let me see you get a hit. I'll try, but I cannot promise you anything. Okay, lay one in the groove, and I'm giving it a belt. Come on, Hans. Rifle it real good. Strike, dry, you're out. It sounded a little odd, hearing softball played with an accent. But after a few minutes of watching them, I began to get the feeling there was something else a little odd. They seemed to be having fun, but on closer observation, I sensed that they were forcing it a little. Underneath their outward show of enthusiasm, there was an undercurrent as though they were uneasy about something. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. So after a while, I called Hans over. You are here, Sergeant? Hans, what's bothering these boys? Bothering them? 
Yeah. They don't seem to have their minds on the game. Oh, uh, don't worry, Sarge. They will get over it. Get over what? Sergeant, it, it is very silly. But do you see that boy over there by the foul line? That skinny one? Yeah. He is a new boy that the Burgermeister sent here to play. He's a strange one. He just came here to Gelnhausen two days ago. Well, strangers are welcome to play, Hans. Yeah, Sergeant. But he will not play. Well, why not? We do not know. We all try to coax him, but he will not even talk to us. He just shakes his head and looks as if he were angry with us. Well, maybe he's just shy. I don't know. All I know is that all of us feel, how do you say, uh, self-conscious about him standing there so gloomy. Ah, I know what you mean. What's his name? Gerhard. Gerhard Holstein. I think I'll talk to him. I sort of made my way casually over to the kid, and when I got closer, I saw what Hans meant. He was about ten years old, and his face was drawn and tight, and he looked much older. <clears throat> Do you speak English? A little. Well, I'm Sergeant Rogers. And your name? Gerhard Holstein. I'm glad to meet you, Gerhard. Shake hands. No. Okay. Gerhard, I've got a new softball here. What do you say you and I catch a little? No, I not do anything with you or nobody. What's the matter? Are you angry with us? No. You sure you wouldn't like to play a little? It's lots of fun. No. Well, I see we're going to have to teach you some words besides no. If you don't want to play, Hans, well, why did you come here? Because the Burgermeister made me. He made me. I do not want to come. Oh, I see. Well, Gerhard, if you don't want to come here, you don't have to. I do not have to? That's right. I may go now? Well, sure, but you're going to be missing... Don't a... shame her, Sergeant. In an instant, he was gone, running out of sight. I turned back slowly to the field and saw that all the kids had stopped playing and were watching. And they started again after a moment, but in no time at all, it seemed. The game had broken up, and they were glumly making their way home, their heads hanging. After all the shouting that had been going on, the field seemed strangely quiet and empty. And somewhere deep inside of me, I felt strangely empty, too. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Victory. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young man, be honest with yourself. Have you reached a standstill in your life? Is every day just like any other? Are you worried about your future? And most important of all, are you feeling sort of dissatisfied with yourself and your own personal development? Well, if this description or any part of it fits you, then it's about time you investigated the wonderful opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in your United States Army. Every man in the Army has a skill, and more often than not, the Army taught him that skill in one of its fine technical schools. The Army offers an interesting present and a secure future, with plenty of promotions along the way, and above all, the Army molds you into a man, a man whose family and friends and country are proud of him, a man who's performing a vital job in his nation's security. If you think you measure up, Stop in at your local recruiting office and see if you can qualify to wear the mark of a man. The uniform of your United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Victory. The next few days following my little talk with this strange boy, Gerhardt, I was kept pretty busy taking care of a load of equipment that had come into the company. I didn't have a chance to get down to the ball field. But I kept on thinking about that evening and that boy. There had been something so pitifully lonely about the way he'd looked. But the longer I thought about it, the more I was sorry I hadn't tried a little harder with him. So, the first evening I had free, I dropped around to the Burgermeister's home and told him about Gerhardt. 
So he he didn't want to play. That's right. Hans tells me he's new to the town. Yeah. Yeah, he's from the eastern zone. Eastern zone? How did he get here? Well, that is a story. A sad story. His father was a professor in Leipzig who wanted to come to the West. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way he could come was to cross the border black. That is, without papers. Mm. So, one day he took his wife and his son Gerhard, and at night he tries. And the, the only one who came through was, was Gerhard. And his parents? Killed by the border patrol in the east. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, now he, he is living with a family in the town until... Until what, Herr Bürgermeister? Well, to be quite honest, I, I do not know. We, we have so many refugees to take care of. It, it is a problem. Yeah. But Gerhardt is, is a special problem. You see, Sergeant Frau Meyer, it is her family he is living with. Well, well poor woman, she, she has a family of ten to look out for, and she just does not have the time to spend trying to help Gerhardt. And, well, she, he, he needs help. Yeah, a lot of help. I see that now. Yeah, I, I had hoped your softball league would interest him, but... Uh... I think it'll take more than playing softball to help a boy whose whole life has been changed so terribly. Yes, yes. But there, there is little more I can do. But oh, something should be done there. There is no question about that. Well, the burgomaster was right, but neither of us could come up with an answer. When I got home that evening, I talked it over with Helen. Oh, the poor little boy. What a tragic thing to happen to a youngster. That sure is. What do you think will happen to him? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Probably get over it in time, but... But what, Jim? I I'm not sure. The, 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 there was something in his eyes. I can't forget it, as though he was asking something of me, but being mad at the same time for asking probably all mixed up inside him. You say he's living with a family of ten. Mm -hmm. well, I don't think that's good for him. Seems to need particular attention. Yeah, I know. The burgomaster's going to look around for another home to send him to, but he doesn't have much hope. Most of the homes are already crowded with refugees. So no matter where he goes, there'll be no one to really help him. That's the way it looks. Jim, I have an idea. I don't know whether it'll work or not. Yeah, what is it, Helen? Well... We have an extra bedroom. I was thinking maybe we could have him stay with us for a couple of weeks. Hey. hey I think you've got something there. I don't know exactly what we can do, but I'm sure we'll think of something. Oh, I'm sure we will. I'll go see the captain about it first thing in the morning. The CO was surprised at my request the next day, but he gave me the okay on it. I phoned the burgomaster about it, and he also agreed to cooperate. And that evening, I got a call from him saying that he'd be at our house the next morning, along with Gerhardt. I guess I don't have to tell you that on that Saturday morning, Helen and I were a little nervous, to put it mildly. You, you see them yet, Jim? No, not yet. Is this room ready? You know, it's been ready for the last two hours. How do I look? Hmm? Oh, I wish I felt as good as you look. My tie straight? Yes. Now, Jim, let's don't act excited or anything when they come. No. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't it? After all the tight spots I've been in, a visit by a ten-year-old kid could throw me. Well, this is something new for you and me. Oh, there they are. Well, this is it. Wish us luck. They're coming. Hello, Herr Burgermeister. Come in. Uh, good morning, Herr Sergeant. Rogers. Hello, Gerhard. Glad to see you again. Uh, I'm Mrs. Rogers, Gerhard. I'm happy to know you. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I am sorry I cannot stay longer, Herr Sergeant, but I must attend to my duties. My, my day is never done. Yeah. Now, Gerhard, I, I, I want you to be a good boy. You'll be a good boy, Herr Burgermeister, won't you, Gerhard? Yes. Well, that is good. And uh, now I say goodbye. I will come back in two weeks, Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Good, good. Auf Wiedersehen, and uh, have a good time. Uh, so long, Herr Burgermeister. Goodbye. Well, young fella, how about coming along to see your room? 
Yes, you probably want to unpack your bag, don't you, Gerhard? Come on, right this way. There you are. It's all yours, Gerhard, to do with what you like. This is your bed, and here's a chest of drawers for your things. This is a radio for you. And look here. A scooter and roller skates. What do you think of that, Gerhard? It, it's like my... It is very nice. I'm glad you like it. Now, as soon as you're finished unpacking, we'll have some breakfast. Ham and fresh eggs. How does that strike you? I want nothing to eat now. You don't? Oh, that's all right, Gerhard. You can eat when you want to. Say, you speak pretty good English. Where'd you learn? My, my father taught it to me. He said I would need it one day. Herr Sergeant, please, may I be alone? Certainly, Gerhard. If you want anything, just call us. Yeah, yeah, sure, Gerhard. We'll be around. Thank you. Well, what do you think? This isn't going to be easy. Alan was right. During that weekend, we hardly saw him. He'd stay in his room, coming out only to eat and then barely enough to keep a sparrow alive, let alone a growing boy. Alan and I both tried to break him down, but we had no luck. He was polite, but stubborn. I saw him smile just once, and that was when Alan kidded him about his cowlick. His face crinkled up, and for an instant, I saw the real Gerhard, an appealing, good-natured kid. But then he froze, and the old sullen look returned again. However, I still thought we could bring him around. I didn't know it then, but I was way off. For on Monday evening... When I came home from duty. Hello, dear. Have a good day? Not too bad. How's the boy? The same. Uh-huh. Well, I I'm going to take him down to the ball field tonight. Maybe I can have some luck with him there. I hope you do. He's such a sad little boy, Jim. Mm. Almost breaks my heart to see him pining away like this. Well, dinner's ready. Good. I'm starved. I'll get him. Gerhard? Gerhard. Jim. Jim. Now, what is it, Helen? He's gone. The window's open. And he's gone. She was right. We searched the whole house and outside, but he was gone. And with him, the little handbag and his belongings that he had brought along with him. I called the burgomaster, who said he'd check with the family he'd been staying with. He called me back in half an hour. He's not there, Sergeant Rogers. Yeah, I expected that. Yes, but one of the boys from the family saw him this afternoon going up the mountain into the forest toward the border. The border? Herr Burgermeister, he's got to be stopped. I'm doing what I can. I, I've sent my police force after him, but I do not know. What do you mean? Well, I have only two policemen, and the forest is big. Too big for only two men to find anyone in darkness. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, oh, wait a minute. Maybe... Yeah, that might do it. Uh, listen, Herr Burgermeister, sit tight till I get back to you. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to see the company commander. We'll find him. If it takes the whole company to do it. Those nights high in the German mountains are dark and cold. And somewhere in that night was Gerhardt, with only a thin jacket to keep him warm. At dawn, we reached the last hill before the border. I could look across and see the ridge along which ran the barbed wire. I was hoping against hope that we'd get to him before he reached it. Luck was with me for once, for just about then, Corporal Olson stumbled across him, lying curled up beside a rock, his clothes torn, his face and hands scratched, and fast asleep. Fatigue had stopped him just in time. I carried him all the way home. He didn't wake up once. Helen gave him a cup of hot chocolate and bundled him into bed and... Aside from his teeth chattering a little, he seemed okay. Well, I can tell you, Helen and I were certainly glad to see him back again safe and sound. Well, I call that perfect timing. Here we are at home, just as I've finished telling the story. Right. How about coming in for a cup of coffee and some of my wife's apple strudel, Mr. Sanders? I'd be glad to. Well, that's certainly a fine story, Sergeant Rogers. But there's one thing... Oh, here's Helen. What? Helen, I want you to meet Mr. Sanders from the Amalgamated Press. I've just been telling him about Gerhard. How do you do, Mr. Sanders? Won't you come in? Thanks. I think I will. 
Now, where's my boy? Come here, Gerhardt. I want you to say hello to somebody. Mr. Sanders, meet my son. Yours? Well, I'm, I'm happy to meet you, Gerhardt. Very happy. How do you do, sir? Uh, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Sanders, I've, I've got to get down to the softball field now. It's very important. My boy is pitching his first game for the Gesundheit Dodgers, and I don't want to miss him. <laughs> Why don't you drop down later after you had a bite? I sure will. Gerhardt, keep him in the strike zone. Okay, I'll try. Right, Dad? Right, son. See you later. So long. Mrs. Rogers, your husband told me everything but the ending to his story, but now I know what it is. You adopted Gerhardt. That's right. It was one of the best things that ever happened to us. And to him, I imagine. Your husband seems quite proud of him. Oh, yes, we both are. By the way, Mr. Sanders, if you're writing a story on Jim, I think you should mention this citation he got. Here, on the wall. Oh. To Sergeant Rogers and the men of the Company A, we hereby present this scroll as a testimonial to your cooperation and friendship. In a world that is torn by suspicion and fear, Actions such as yours demonstrate that goodwill and trust are the true basis for mutual understanding between peoples of different countries. With our greatest appreciation for a job well done, in the name of the citizens of Gelhausen, Helmut Neumeyer, Burgermeister. Mrs. Rogers, the Duke of Wellington once said that the Battle of Waterloo was won on the playing fields of Eton. I have a feeling that there was a victory won right here on the softball field of Gelhausen. A much bigger victory. If you're of service age, we feel sure you'll be interested in the reserved for you training program of your United States Army. Here's how it works. You make application at your nearest United States Army recruiting station, at which time you state your preference of training course. There are over 87 courses to choose from. Now, this application does not place you under obligation to enlist. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you'll receive a letter of acceptance that is your written guarantee of a reserved seat in the course of your choice. Then you can enlist and begin your career as a skilled specialist in the United States Army. So, if you expect to serve a tour of duty in the near future, make sure you make the most of your opportunities. Visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army Recruiting Service. This is Dick Hartley speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.